All right, so let's very quickly implement this in an app scripts user form. Now, again, there's a bunch of things we could improve here, right? We should add methods to update our existing data. We should add methods to destroy our object if necessary. Also, ways to target elements other than just using IDs, because right now we can only choose IDs to point to our elements. As a matter of fact, that last one I'm gonna change because that shouldn't take much of an effort. So let me just give this two different ways to be able to build this dropdowns with IDs or maybe just passing the elements themselves. So in order for me to do that, let me actually comment this and this for a second now. I'm gonna go back to my class here the way we build our element right now, we do this document get element by ID here, and we also do it in here. So those are two places where we're actually accessing the element by the ID. Now this time, I don't want to actually use that. So I'm gonna remove it out of here. So I'm just gonna do the target. And in this case, the target is gonna be the element, not the ID. And that means that here, when we do this, we don't need to do this map to get the elements using their IDs. We can just do this. So just get rid of that. I'm not sure if there's anything else we need to change here. I don't believe so. I am going to change this name instead of array of IDs. I'm going to say array of elements. So now what this means is that this easy dropdown is no longer accepting IDs. So if we're trying to use this, we should come in here and let's just open that. And we're gonna have to get all those elements. And that's the first one. I need to repeat this for the rest. And then we should just pass those elements. Okay, so that is working. So this means now we can get this elements using any selectors. It doesn't have to be by ID all the time. I do want to have the option to just do the IDs similar to this. So let's create an option like that too in our class. So I'm gonna go below this one and I'll call this easy drop down by IDs. And what do we need to do? We basically have to go grab all those IDs that are being passed as an array and pass it to this easy drop down method. Well, first of all, let's just map through this. So if this is a list, we can map through that list. And for each ID in that list, we'll do an arrow function and we'll return the element. So that's document get element by ID and pass the ID. So that's that. Now this should return an array of elements, which is what we pass here, which means we should be able to just run this. So if I just do this dot that easy drop down and then just pass this whole thing that should create the same effect. So now I should be able to use this new method by simply scrolling down and replacing this with easy drop down by IDs. Now hopefully both drop downs are working. One is using the IDs, the other one is using the elements. Good. All right, finally, let's now put this in our web app. So let's get a spreadsheet.
All right, so now we have our arrays in our spreadsheet. This is that locations, this is our cars. Uh, I'm a little concerned about these not being text. They should probably be converted to text, but I'm gonna leave it like this just to see what happens. But in case this doesn't work, we'll just convert this to plain text or we could add handling in our JavaScript. But basically we have these two worksheets with some data. Now we need some script here. HTML file. A script file. So we'll just get our HTML service and use that form file for that and then make HTML out of that. And then we want to put this in our user interface as a sidebar or something of that sort. All right, so let's go create that form. Let's just grab some bootstrap and throw it in there. So now this will be for cars. So I'm gonna call this C1 for this ID. Not the best ID, but I just wanna throw something in there. Options, we don't need those. So this is the first drop down ID C1. I need to just create a few more. So just different IDs for all of these. So, oh, actually it was just three, so we don't need this fourth one. All right, I'm probably also gonna have the second group, so let's just copy paste this again. And you would probably put them in containers, make it nicer, but I'm not gonna do that. Okay, so we should have our dropdowns. So if I right now save this, go run this sidebar thing, which should be a dialogue, not a sidebar, but you could also do it on a sidebar. There we go. We have our dropdowns. We should probably make that a lot bigger so we can see what's going on. So I can see all of it. So now we're at the point that we need to just grab this data and load it in that dropdown list. So let's go to our server side and create a function for it. So there are a couple of ways to do this. You could just have different functions to call and get the data from this spreadsheet than the other spreadsheet. If you have a bunch of data, you probably want to just get one function to return all of them as an array or something, but I'm just gonna do this separately to keep this simple. So I'm gonna just do one function to get me this, another function to get me cars. I'll just get the data region. This is pretty much just going here and doing like command A to grab the data. That should be that. Let's just uh, make another one for locations. Oh, actually that was locations. The other one was for cars. So this worksheet is called cars. So there we go. We have our functions, get locations, get cars. 
Hopefully that works. Let's just test this really quickly here. All right, so it says range. We should have returned the values. This is why we need to test things. Good, so our function works. It returns what it needs to. We don't need this test anymore. So we have these two functions that we should be able to call from our form now. So I'm gonna go to my form and add a script. As a matter of fact, I'm gonna add two. And the second one is where I'm gonna write the actual script for the form. And this first one is gonna be that drop down class. Now, it would probably be a better idea to host it someplace and link it to that as a source, which you could obviously do too. But right now, I'm just gonna copy paste that code in here in the script. But I don't wanna just copy paste whatever I have here. Well, first of all, I don't need this bottom part. I just need this class. But I want to make sure I transpile this. So I'm going to go to Babel really quickly and do that. So that should be as simple as me just pasting that code for that class only, not the rest of it, in here and basically just grabbing what's on the right side in here. Copy that, go back not here, to our form, and paste it right in here in this first script. This is why we should have a different file for it because now we have a mess. But whatever it is, this is our code now. So now to use it, we're going to use it in here, in the script part. So in here, we need to basically, when the page loads, we need to go get information from those functions, those arrays. So let's go ahead and do that. So when the content loads, we want to run a function. That's what I'm going to call it. Let's create the function. So now we need to call those backend functions to get our arrays one of which was called get locations. The other one is called get cars. And actually, before I copy and paste this, let me add the success handler to this too. And this is where the callback function is going to be that's going to accept whatever is returned from here which you could do as a separate function, but I'm just going to do it right here. And this is what I was saying is that if you create one function to get all that data, you can just get in one piece like this instead of having to call this multiple times. But here is where I'm going to call those two functions. Now I'm going to have to just set my dropdowns as soon as I get the results back. So to set the dropdown, I'm just gonna go copy the code we were using before. I'll just use IDs, this one. Now, if you're gonna be using those variables later on to do something, you probably want to declare them outside in here someplace so that you have access to them. And then just do this. But if you're not going to be using them, you don't have to do this part or even do the, the equals. So you can just do new drop down and not have this part. I'm going to keep that. Let's actually make the variables like this. So now let's pick the right IDs. So this is get locations. So what did I call those? Oh, of course, L1, L2, L3, and this is C1, C2, C3, got it. So for locations, there are four levels. And for cars, there are three levels. And these are just the IDs, so you should match it with whatever IDs you did. 
So with this, let me save all of that and go back and reload our form to see what happens. Now to reload this, we need to, with our current setup, just run this function, which you could do by adding a menu on top so you can use the menu. But for me, this is good enough. You can see how I do this menus and all of this in my user forms and web app tutorials if you're interested, but let's see if this works. Geo data is not defined. Let me go check what I did. Oh, of course, we forgot to pass the data we're getting back to our dropdowns. By we, I mean I did. Let me save this and run this again. Okay, so this is populated. That's good sign. So Toyota, see we got these two. Okay, so that's there. Now I'm curious if, oh, there's nothing dependent on these. So I guess that wouldn't matter. Just to test this, I'm just curious. What happens if we change these to numbers? So let me change this Corollas, for example, to five. So I want to see if I choose five as a second level, does this work? Because this is number type. No, it doesn't. So this is what I thought would happen. So if I change this to plain text now, which we should do for all of these. So, see now it works because five is no longer a number, it's text, it works as it's supposed to. Good. So there you go. So that's our dropdown that we implemented in our HTML CSS that we now have in our app here. And now we should be able to use this new dropdown thing to just throw a new dependent dropdown anytime we need one. And like I said, there are tons of different improvements you could do, especially if you want to dynamically go back and change the data and all of this stuff. You just need to go back and improve this class. But for this, that should be plenty. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.